This is Ham Lee III from Spiritual Combatants, where we're training soldiers for Christ. I want to thank you for joining me for today's message. Today, I'm going to be talking about four reasons believing all things is important. And so this is a continuation of our video series on 17 characteristics of love. And this is covering 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8. So let's get right into it. So and when we're talking about believing all things, and let me just give you a definition of believing. And it's to have faith in uh, or to upon or respect to a person or a thing. It's like the credit or implication like to entrust, especially one's spiritual well-being to Christ and to believe or commit it, and then also to put trust, uh, put in trust with. And oftentimes, many of us in, in, in our society or around us, people think the negative of everything. And so some people think the negative of everything because they don't want to be disappointed if something bad happens. So you say, hey, if I always think something bad is going to happen, then I'm not going to be surprised when it actually does happen. Or every time somebody says something, we always think the very worst of every person, place, and thing. And so we're going back into this all things, going back to, you know, anybody, anywhere, all things things, the nouns. And so this is what we do, but we don't realize that that type of thinking affects our actions and how we move forward. And because love doesn't do that. And when we think about somebody that's loving, we think about somebody that's hopeful. Think about the people that believed in you. And when you were going through and you were acting up, doing all type of crazy things. Somebody was right there believing in you, whether it's your grandparents or maybe a father, mother, uh, a family friend or a mentor that was believing in you when you were, when you didn't believe in your own self. And you remember that. You, We all remember the people that were there for us when nobody else may have believed in us or some people gave up on us, but you always had someone who did and they were loving you through that situation, through the muck and mire that you were going through in order to get to where you are today or through a certain season or situation in your life. And so that's what we're talking about with believing. But let's dig into this a little bit more. So number one, the one of the important things is to believe to remain pure. And this is going right back to what I was talking about in the beginning. But in, first, in uh, Titus 1.15, it says, unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. Even their mind and conscience is defiled. And so to be pure is to be clean, like pure. There's no impurities. There's nothing, you know, everything is, you can see right through it. And, and so that, but when you're unbelieving, nothing is pure. Your mind and your conscience is defiled, which is like unapproved. It's like it's, it's tainted and it's contaminated. And so when we're talking about unbelieving, it's this disbelief, and it's without Christian faith, uh, like especially like a heathen. It says like untrustworthy person, um, somebody, somebody, someone that believes not, that's faithless and an infidel, and it has unbelieving. And so when you have these type of people, nothing is pure. So think about the people, or even yourself, when you may have thought something negative, or you didn't believe in a certain situation. You thought the negative in that in that certain circumstance, and no one can change your mind about it but nothing was pure. But then when you think about it, and just in that area, when you're negative in one area, oftentimes you'll see people be negative in other areas too. It doesn't just carry, it, it doesn't just stay in one area. It carries over into other areas as well. And it says defiled and unbelieving. So when you are tainted and you're contaminated and you don't believe, it says nothing is pure. You don't see anything. It changes how you see things. It changes your, your conscience. It changes it says here, the conscience is like your perception. And it's like this inner sense of what is right and wrong in one's conduct or motives. And like the complex of ethical and moral principles that controls or inhibits the actions and thoughts of an, of an individual. So everything you do, your perspective, and you, when we see people like that, and even if we assess our own lives and take an inventory of ourselves, we may find that we were the same way. And in every area, we begin to think negative about a lot of different things, a lot of different people, a lot of different situations. And it's hard for us to be able to believe that something positive is going to come out of what's going on in front of us. And what I hear and what I see is becoming my reality instead of me believing for something positive to happen by faith and hoping that something good is going to come out of that. Because when I believe it, then my actions will align with that. 
And so that's why we have to change our perspective and believe that things are going to work out. That people that may be acting one way today, they can be a better way tomorrow. A situation that looks like it's not going to come through, it's not going to make it, it actually will. And because so that when I believe that, then my actions can align with that and I'll begin to fall right in line. Because if I believe, if I don't believe it, then I'm going to act like I don't believe it. But if I believe it, I'm going to act like I do. And so in Philippians 4 and 8, let me read this before we go to our next point. It says, Fowling brothers, whatsoever things are, are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. And so it's important that we begin to think on things that are positive as opposed to things that are negative. And this is really a challenge for us because of how we, many of us were raised. Even when we're in the church, we've still been, been having a negative attitude and a negative demeanor about different things. And in, in that area, many of us have never changed. We had the same demeanor from when we came into church about different things, about the same stuff, and, and nothing's ever changed about those certain situations, and it's affecting our ability to believe God in certain areas, which winds up affecting all areas. So, and I'll get into that in a second. So in number two, it says here, you are what you believe. And so think about this. Your actions show what you believe and you will act on what you believe is true in your mind. And so when we see someone acting out, and so and then they say that, hey, I believe this, but their actions say they believe that. And you're like, well, no, you don't, because if, if you believe this, you will do this instead of doing that. And that's what we see out of people. And so well, let me go back into, let's go back into Titus 1, 15 and 16. I'm going to read 16 now. So let me read 15 first. Because it's unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, not, is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. So these are people that may know God. So you're talking about maybe people that are, we'll say in today's time, people that are in the church. They go to church faithfully. They're always there. They're professing that they know God. People on the street, hey, I believe in God. I know God. But then... Because they're defiled and unbelieving in their actions, nothing is pure. Remember that in verse 15, their mind and conscience is defiled. And because of that, even though they say they know God, but in their works, they deny him. So these are the people that say, hey, I believe in God, but they're doing their actions and the fruit that they're bearing shows that, that they don't believe. And they act as an unbeliever, as a sinner, as opposed to someone that's, that's seeking to live a separated, consecrated, holy and righteous life unto God. Because of that, they, their, actions, their actions are speaking louder than what their words are saying. And so look at this. Now, in, work, in their works that they deny him, they deny that they know God because you say you profess him, but your actions say that you deny him. You live as such a person that denies him. And this means to disavow or to reject him, to refuse God. That you're saying, because if I believe it, if I believe in him, then my actions are going to line up with someone that says they believe. And so uh, when you're looking at, so these people are also abominable, that's detestable, idolatrous. They're disobedient, unpersuadable, and that is stubbornly perverse or rebellious, uh, willfully and obstinately disobedient. And then you think about reprobate in every work. And reprobate is unapproved and rejected by implication worthless. And they're cast away, rejected, and reprobate. And so you think about someone who even who says they know God, they, even though they profess it and do church things, their good works will be rejected and counted as worthless because they don't believe. And so this makes me think about uh, a scripture in, um, in Matthew 7. I want to say Matthew 7 around 20, uh, 21. It says here, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So these are the, those are those people, because if they said they believe, they were professing God. 
and they were doing things and they were even doing mighty works. Now, you know, you're talking about people that are prophesying in his name, that are casting out demons and doing many wonderful works. But in the end, because they weren't following him, they weren't, they were working iniquity. They weren't living as a person that was following after God. They were professing him. They were doing good works, but in some way, shape or form, they must not have believed in him because if I'm going to believe, I'm going to have the faith and try to work my life to a place where I want to be obedient obedient unto him so that my actions and my words begin to line up. If I say I believe in God, then my actions are going to line up with that. And we'll get into this in a little, in a little bit later because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Absolutely impossible to please him. And we'll talk about that here shortly. But let's go on to number three. In number three, it says, don't allow another person's words or actions or your own situations to create disbelief or unbelief in you. And so sometimes we'll hear somebody, like I was talking a little bit earlier, we'll hear a negative report or someone will do something or we're in some type of situation. And sometimes we're in the situation longer than what we want to be in. And we just wanted to hurry up and get done. And we don't see how the situation can get any better. All we're looking at is a negative thing things that are surrounding us and seem like they're choking the very life and hope and faith from us. But instead, I got to be able to hold on to believe and to hope that this issue will pass, the better, better will come, and my days will be great in the Lord. And I, we will be overcomers and we will be able to stand and this person will be delivered. This person will be healed. This person will be saved and we will be able to come out of the situation. But I have to change my thinking because when I change my thinking, my acting will change as well. My actions and what I do will align with what I say I believe. So let's go into a certain situation from the scriptures. And this is when uh, Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house uh, to heal his daughter. And so now there was a crowd of people around him on all sides. And so in the King James uh, Bible says thronging. And so in, in Mark 5, 25 to 34, it says a certain wish woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years. So you're talking about 12 long years. This is a very long time, over a decade. And it says here in tw verse 26 that she suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all she had and nothing was better, but her situation grew worse. So... Here it is, you know, she's suffering things of physician. So I'm going to the doctor to get better, but that person, that physician makes it worse. I go to another person and it makes it worse. But in, in the end, I'm spending everything I have. So this had to be a very significant issue if she was willing to spend everything she had searching for a solution to be healed. And so after 12 years, you think about it, I've suffered for 12 years, I'm going through, and all these things are making my situation worse. And I'm and now I have no money. I have no means to be able to maybe support myself or to be able to continue searching for solutions. And so this may be like my life sentence. This, my, the rest of my life may be lived with this certain issue. But she hears of Jesus. And so when she hears of him, she came in the press behind. So the Bible doesn't talk about, you know, what she may have went through that process, but she didn't give up. She didn't give up on her, on the possibility of her being healed. She heard of Jesus and must have knew of him and what he has done. And so now she's going off into the press. So now, I mean, Jesus was like surrounded by people. People are all around him, but she comes through the press and then she touches his garment and she, and she said, if I may touch his clothes, I may be whole. And think about that. Think of the faith, the belief. If I can, I don't even have to talk to Jesus. If I can simply touch his garment, I'm going to be healed. And as even though it doesn't say where she was in the crowd, but she's pressing her way through. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I can yet touch his clothes, I'll be healed. And in verse uh, 29, Straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned to him in the, in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples said unto him, Thou see of the multitude thronging thee, and, and saith thou who touched me? And, and he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, and came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. 
Again, your actions will show what you believe and you will act on what you believe is true in your mind. And that was for this woman. She believed even though her situation grew worse, worse, even though she ran out of money, she didn't have nothing left. She still had hope to believe when Jesus came by. So that's something for us to take on. Sometimes we just look at a situation. We could be going through something for a couple months, maybe a week or two, and we're ready to give up. But let's not give up. Let's hold fast and endure and, and just be dug in. Now, regardless of what's happening, regardless of what I see, I'm going to keep believing I can be healed. I'm going to believe my friend can be healed. I believe my family member can be healed. I believe this person will be delivered. I believe my family will be whole. What is it that you need to believe God for today? Don't stop believing. Keep believing regardless of what you see in front of you. Don't allow what you see to dictate what you're going to believe. Walk it out by faith, just as, as we see here. So number four is to believe in Christ and walk in victory now and in eternity. And so, again, to believe is to have faith in. But this is like the, in, in the implication to trust in one's spiritual well-being to Christ. And so being confident in this, and this is in Philippians 1 and 6, it says of this very thing that he which began a good work in you will, um, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And so through the Holy Spirit, God began a work in you or in some way that you know. So trust God that he's going to see that thing through. So sometimes we see someone that gets saved and all of a sudden they fall to the wayside and they may turn to some other sinful behaviors. So instead of us giving up on them and throwing them off to the wayside, let's believe that the work that God is doing in that person, he's going to see it to completion. That one day that they, this person may be working out their salvation. God may be working out a situation in them to bring him closer to himself, bring that person closer to himself. But let me stand in faith and believe. Let me be one of those people that's standing on the sidelines and when people are going through their situations just like our grandmas or grandparents or somebody else that was going through standing and believing for us and over us while we were in the midst of our bad situations in the midst of our darkness there was one shining light one person outside of Christ but there was one person that was standing there and believing be that person for someone if you see someone that's saying they believe in, uh, that they're going to be healed, nobody else may believe. But you say, you know what? I, I'm going to stand and agree with you. I'm going to touch and agree with that, that you're going to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to stand and believe with you. And you be serious about that. Stand and believe with people. Stand and believe the positive. People need to see that today. People need to see that from the saints. From the saints, from the believers, the disciples of Jesus Christ, that we believe and stand and believe that one day, whether it's today, tomorrow, one day, we will see, uh, we will see deliverance and we will be on the other side victorious in Jesus Christ. Not only just for now and what we're going through, but also in eternity with him. That's where, that, that's where we all want to be, but we're all going through the situation of life so that we may be overcomers of all the things that we're experiencing, that we can live a victorious life showing that we're being obedient to him so we're not like those that were in in uh, Matthew 7 but we'll be standing for those that are on the on the side when Christ says well done thy good and faithful servant and that's what we all want to do we all want to see well done thy good and faithful servant and so now God that God is going to go through the Holy Spirit is going to continue to work in us to perfect us in holiness and sanctification. He's preparing us to spend an eternity with him. And so some of the things that he goes, he, put, he may bring us through, he's bringing us through or even people that you know, because he needs to purge something out of them. And so he'll bring them through a difficult situation. It may seem tough, but he's meaning to bring something out. He wants through that situation through the diverse temptations and situations of developing patience, experience, and hope, and making sure that you begin to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, that you may be molded and shaped in the image of Jesus Christ. And he's doing that for all of us. And some things he's going to remove from our lives, but there's a lot of things he's going to say, I need you to go through. Because when you go through that situation, now you can be a testimony, a living testimony, not just of the healing. He may touch you and heal you, but then he may have you go through something so that you can go back and encourage your brothers and your sisters that go through the same exact thing. 
But what we have to do is we have to have faith to believe in God, believe in Jesus, and believe in eternal life through him, through our faithful living. So in Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God because he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We have to believe, and I want to read this. This is my, my confession too, but I want to make sure I read all this in. It says that I believe God is the creator of all including me, that he chose me from the foundation of the world and he knows all my days to the very last before they even begin. Right now, he knows that. He, he knows all. He sees all. He is everywhere and he is all powerful. Nothing is impossible for him. And he, I believe that he loved me so much that he willingly gave his son to die for my sins and your sins, that we believe that he covered us through the blood which was shed. And I believe that he saved me and you from eternal life of separation from him and that we will have we will be with him in all eternity and that God will reward everyone every person who diligently seeks him not only for physical healing but for spiritual as well that there's no time limit as far as when that may happen because we don't know how long the situation that we're going through will last we don't know how many days we have remaining on this earth but let us be faithful until the end let us keep diligently seeking him and enduring patiently as we talked about throughout this series that I'm going to do so I'm a patient be patient with him as far as time long suffering but also in all things. And I'm going to do so silently, just as Jesus did silently, just like we look at Job silently, that they they suffered, but they were silent in their suffering. They're not complaining and they're not uh, murmuring and disputing with others. And that's what's important for us to do as well, to continue to endure. And so we seek them when times are good. We seek him when times are bad. We seek him in the morning. We seek him in the evening. We seek him all the time and we don't stop believing. And so we believe no matter what, no matter where God calls us to be or what he wants us to do, let us believe that things are going to work out. Let's be positive. Isn't that loving to be positive about things and always to be the person, you know what, this situation can work out. And I really want to challenge you. Now, I want to challenge you throughout these days, throughout this week and the coming days to be positive. And as soon as you begin to say something, the negative up oh, you know no i'm gonna believe the positive with this I, I may see something that says it's going to turn out bad but i'm gonna believe it's good and watch your emotions and how your actions begin to line up with what you say that you believe that's the faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen and so in the scripture and i talked about this several times in videos but the substance that they're hoping for in the scriptures were eternal life and that's around verses 13 to 16 and the evidence was their lifestyle because their lifestyle showed the evidence showed that they believed that they will enter into the eternal kingdom and so let us believe that too let us walk in faith so that we believe that and so whatever situation you got to go through and when you read through hebrews 11, some of them lived very good lives and some of them lived, uh, had great persecution and tribulation, but each of them were faithful to the call that God had placed them in or the purpose and the life that he wanted them to live. So you be faithful. I need to be faithful to what God's called me to do. And I pray that you will be faithful and you will be able to live out your days in a manner that is honorable and pleases God. So don't allow your circumstances to cause any type of disbelief or, or distrust in God. Let us endure to the end and let us, as Proverbs says, to trust in the Lord with all our heart, to lean not to our, all, our own understanding and in all our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. And I pray that God will bless you. Take some time to really consider this video and, and consider some of the other videos that we have also in this series. And I pray that through this series that you will begin to believe all things. So if you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please hit me up. Like this video. If it blessed you, share it with your friends and subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive more videos just like this. And until the next time, may God bless you abundantly. God bless.